Today we're going to count down the top 10 low maintenance tees in the tarantula hobby. Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and if you enjoy species-specific care and husbandry videos, as well as all things tarantula-related, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on all notifications so you'll be alerted every time I upload a new video in the future. Today's video is a topic that was suggested by Midnight Muldoon down in the comments of a previous video. If you have any suggestions for topics I should cover in upcoming videos, make sure you leave those suggestions down below in the comments. So I looked through my entire collection and picked out the 10 tarantulas that I feel like are the easiest to take care of. They require the lowest amount of interaction, pretty much no humidity requirements, easy to feed, easy to take care of, and just overall easy species. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that they're great beginner tarantulas. It just means that whether they're new world or old world, their husbandry, the care of the tarantula is pretty straightforward and simple. So the number 10 spot belongs to a species of old world tarantula that is native to South Africa. This species, in fact this entire genus, I believe, makes great beginner old world tarantulas. So if you're getting your first old world tarantula after you've kept new worlds for a while, while this is a species or even a genus that I highly suggest. This tarantula grows to about four inches in size with males being a little bit smaller, about maybe three inches. They're a heavy webber and obligate burrower and they prefer arid conditions. And usually they'll retreat and hide before they ever give any kind of defensive posture. So one of the most low maintenance tarantulas in my collection is the Harpectera baviana or the Hanover olive starburst baboon. I just keep it on dry substrate, give it plenty of depth to burrow, throw in a few decorations so that it can use those as anchor points for its webs, add a water dish, and you're pretty much done. Now number nine is a species that I've had a lot of requests to do a care and husbandry video for, and I will be doing that in the very near future. But this is a new world terrestrial tarantula that's very popular in the hobby. Though it can be a little feisty and has some pretty nasty urticating hairs, when it comes to the care and husbandry, it's very straightforward and very simple. This new world tarantula is native to Brazil and Paraguay and can grow to nearly eight inches in size. This tarantula will usually retreat when possible, but if there's not a clear avenue of escape, it can kick some urticating hairs that, in my opinion, are a little nasty. They itch like crazy. But I keep mine essentially just on dry substrate, provide a hide and a water dish, and you're pretty much done. Now being a Brazilian species, some tend to think that it needs a damp substrate, but I just keep mine on dry substrate, provide a large water dish that I keep full, and I'm talking about the Nandu Chromatis or the Brazilian red and white tarantula. Now number eight is another old world tarantula and this one is endemic to Mozambique. Now this is a fossorial tarantula so it needs plenty of deep substrate, but it likes a dry, arid environment. It is a pet hole that rarely leaves its burrow, but as long as you provide a water dish and plenty of deep substrate, you'll have no issues with this species. Very hardy, very easy to take care of. And I'm talking about the Agaphacellus ezendami or the Mozambique gold baboon tarantula. Now number seven is one of my all time favorite tarantulas and it also happens to be a dwarf species. This new world tarantula comes from Bolivia and doesn't get more than about two and a half inches in size. This is a feisty tarantula that can be a little quick sometimes, but it's very forgiving of husbandry mistakes and super easy to take care of. Despite its size, it's very hardy and does well on dry substrate. So number seven is the Syracosmus Perez Malsi or the Bolivian blue dwarf beauty. Now 
Now, six on the list is a hobby staple. Most people probably already have this in their collection, and if not, you really should consider adding it. This new world terrestrial tarantula can be found in Paraguay and Argentina. It grows up to eight inches in size and can live for up to 15 years. It's a great beginner tarantula. It's docile, hardy, and one of the few species of teas that I actually try to handle from time to time. Dry substrate, a water dish, and a hide is pretty much all you need for the enclosure of this tea. I'm talking about the Gramistola pulcropes or the Chaco Golden Knee Tarantula. Now the last species may be popular in the hobby, but number five is a definite icon. In fact, I'd say it's probably the most recognizable tarantula species, not just in the hobby, but probably in the world. When most people think of a tarantula, this species is usually the image that comes to mind. It's not just common to find it in pet stores, but you see it a lot in movies and TV as well. This is a great display tarantula. It's very thick, very hardy, and very simple to take care of. It's mostly docile, but occasionally it will kick hairs when it feels threatened. So number five is the Brachypelma homori or the Mexican red knee tarantula. Now the number four spot is a species that I actually recommend a lot to beginners. And when people ask me what my top tarantula species are, this one usually makes the list. And that's not just because it's so easy to take care of, but it also has almost a sweet demeanor. This species can be found in Arizona and Northern Mexico, and is one of the easiest tarantulas to care for as far as husbandry is concerned. Again, this species likes arid conditions, so you just need dry substrate, a hide, and a water dish. They're usually very very good eaters, but they can also go a long time without eating. Hunger strikes can last six months to even a year. So going long times without eating can be a little concerning to new keepers, but it's a great species if you have to travel out of town a lot because you don't need to be there every week to feed it. It can go weeks without having to be fed, and adults can even go five, six, maybe even seven weeks. Now I'm talking about the Afonapelma calcotes, also known as the Arizona blonde or the desert blonde tarantula. Number three is actually the first and the second tarantula I ever owned. It's very common to find this species in pet stores around the world, but especially here in the US. Well, at least it used to be like 20 years ago. Sometimes, from what I hear, they can be a little difficult to find at the moment. But one of the reasons they're so popular is because they're so easy to take care of. And I can tell you from experience, because 20 years ago I had no experience, this species was very forgiving of many husbandry mistakes I made. It didn't just live a long time, it survived me and my lack of knowledge for a very long time. This tarantula is native to Chile, Bolivia, and Argentina. Females can live over 20 years, and it's a very hardy, basic beginner tarantula that will probably be pretty forgiving of any mistakes you might make. And I'm referring to the Gramistola porteri or the Gramistola rosea, known commonly as the Chilean rosehair tarantula.
Now number two is a popular tarantula in the hobby worldwide and is also known as a great beginner species. About a year ago, it went through a pretty significant taxonomical name change, meaning it used to be a brachypelma. This new world terrestrial tarantula can be found in Nicaragua, Honduras, and Costa Rica. It's a thick, docile, hardy species that's a staple in the hobby. Known commonly as the curly hair tarantula, scientifically, the Tillicottle avipelosum. Well, if you've made it this far in the video, thank you for sticking around and be sure to hit that like button. Let me know you enjoyed the content or at least found it helpful. And if there's a species of tarantula that you feel is very low maintenance that hasn't made my list yet, make sure you drop that down below in the comments section. It'll be good to get that kind of conversation going. Now the number one species may not come as a surprise to some of you that have been following my channel for a while. I mean, in my opinion, this tarantula takes the cake. It checks off every box. It's another new world terrestrial tarantula that actually seems a little more semi-arboreal. So you kind of get the best of both worlds there. It's a heavy weber, it's a great eater, it prefers arid conditions, and is native to northern Venezuela. If you haven't guessed already, I'm talking about the Chromatopelma cyanopubescens or the green bottle blue tarantula. Of all the species in my collection, the GBB has to be the easiest to take care of. I mean, just dry substrate, a water dish, and you know, some hides and things for it to web up. It's one of the most beautiful species in the hobby. It's one of the heaviest webbers in the hobby, and it's one of the easiest low maintenance tarantulas that you can find. Maybe it's not the best beginner tarantula because it can be a little feisty, but if you have even like the most minimal experience, this tarantula will be great to add to your collection. If you wanna see my picks for the best tarantula species in the hobby, check out this video right here. And if you wanna see all the top 10 tarantula lists I've made, check out this playlist right here. As always, it's awesome having you here. Subscribe if you wanna see more content. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>